Hey all here at OS Reviews, in this video we're taking a throwback look at the original Sony PSP, the 1000 series, that was released in Japan in November of 2004, in the US in 2005. So this thing is over 14 years old now. Time really does fly, and it was the first portable gaming console from Sony meant to compete with Nintendo, which was really dominating in handheld gaming at the time. It sold for around $200 and really was a smash success for Sony, selling over 84 million units. Of course, in 2019, the specs on the PSP are by no means fast at all anymore. In fact, it came with just a single core 333 megahertz processor, along with just 32 megabytes of RAM, so it was kind of comparable to higher end PDAs back in the day, except it was just super well optimized by Sony to run on their proprietary operating system, making things feel really smooth. It also featured a 4.3 inch display, which was larger than the competing Nintendo DS and DS Lights. It has a traditional 16 by 9, by 9 aspect ratio, and the resolution was 480 by 272. So that's also pretty low res by today's standards. But from my memory of using this 10 years ago, I thought it was one of the highest res displays that I had seen uh, back then. So it really is just amazing how far we've come. Now that built-in Wi-Fi is notable because it also is one of my earliest recollections of using a portable device or a mobile device to browse the internet, namely at uh, various stores, at Starbucks, even at the airport. I just thought it was amazing how I was able to just browse complex desktop versions of sites like the New York Times, uh, my email, eBay at the time, when I was just traveling and on the go and didn't have to use my computer. I thought it was just so futuristic back then, but uh, obviously today's phones can all do that and handle things much more demanding. Anyways, here was the original packaging, and Sony's uh, cartridges were called UMD. They were essentially small discs which were put into a plastic cartridge. It was very different also from Nintendo's approach, which is much more similar to a flash-based storage solution, kind of like an SD card, but this thing has actually an optical drive where where it spins here it uses a card slot called the memory stick pro duo now this was back when sony still relied on all of its proprietary media formats including the memory stick pro duo and these were crazy expensive compared to regular sd cards they were often uh, maybe even two times the price but luckily in recent years sony has become much more reasonable and have adopted pretty much standard ports and connectors and memory card slots so all of that is now gone in the past Anyways, revisiting the hardware first, here it is next to, let's say, a Nintendo DS Lite, and you can tell that it's very similar overall, it's a little bit longer, it's portable. Um, here it is next to a modern day cell phone, which has a 5.5 inch screen, so you can see that the uh, width here is actually pretty similar, but it's of course a lot thicker. The entire body is made out of a polycarbonate plastic, which is starting to kind of show its age. It does look very classy with the silver and black combination, kind of like a piano. But now, over 15 years later, there is a little bit of cracking going on with some of the plastic. Uh, but overall, still looks like a very kind of iconic gaming console design that many kind of TV shows, animes, and just books that you'll read still references this particular form factor. Anyways, there's also a front facing speaker on the top. There's a thumbstick which offers a slightly smoother navigation and it's very easy to press but it gets dirty really quickly because of the tiny grooves. In fact, I think it's uh, one trait among all PSP owners is uh, knowing the pain of how difficult it is to clean off this small joystick. But anyways, there's also on the bottom here a microphone, there's a home key, volume controls, there's also a mp3 player media key, a select and start buttons, and on the bottom here is the proprietary PSP charger. You also found a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack along with a lanyard strap. On the side there was a dedicated power key and on the back there was a removable door to access the lithium ion battery which is 1800 milliamp hours. Uh, luckily this can be hot swapped pretty easily compared to the Nintendo DS units if you wanted to bring a spare battery for example. On the top you have the arrow left and right keys which are transparent which looks pretty cool, the Sony logo and there's also the ejection key for the UMD disc reader. So this is spring assisted, it pops open like this, really does look like a UMPC or a microcomputer, and you can just pop in one of those cartridges. We also had a mini USB port that was meant for syncing information with a computer. If you wanted to file transfer any content like music or movies, but it couldn't be used to actually charge the PSP itself. If we try and turn it on, let's see what the interface looks like after all these years. It should be very nostalgic. Sony Computer Entertainment, and 
we are just greeted into the system. It's just a series of icons that you can sw swipe and uh, go left and right between and up and down to go through various features. You can tell here that navigation is actually quite fast, and the boot up as well, when we turned it on, only took about 10 seconds, so very well optimized considering that it has just a 333 megahertz processor. Although, again, in 2004, 2005, that was already very cutting edge. And here's the About PSP kind of splash screen. So it has Flash Player built on in, RSA secured, and all of the various companies and developers that were working with Sony back in the day. Shows MP4s, it can play video, a lot of some of these copyright information that you can access. Um, anyways, the next tab over is for camera. Again, there's no built-in camera on the original PSP, but there were optional accessories that you could pick up, or you could access, again, the proprietary media stick card uh, cartridge over here, the Magic Gate, and you can pop in a card and load some images on there if you wanted to extend the media functionality. Here we have music, and what Sony did back then was something called Sense Me Channels. It sorted your songs automatically by different uh, genres and moods. So if you were feeling happy or sad, you could listen to different types of music. In fact, if you tap on yes, let's see what that looks like. So it's a pretty attractive looking interface. It shows cover art if it was available, and then you can use the shoulder keys there to swipe back and forth between the tracks. Videos loaded onto this memory card, uh, if memory serves me correct. And the reason why there's a lot of kind of movies here is because back in the day, Sony were really promoting the PSP. So if you purchased a DVD copy of a movie that was from Sony production, they also had a free digital download that you could port over to the PSP. So if you purchased a, I guess, a DVD copy of Rush Hour, it would also come with a digital copy designed for the PSP Everything just looks a lot blurrier than I remember, so uh, we've come a long way in terms of display technology. It just doesn't seem quite as sharp anymore, which really it isn't. But uh, you can definitely watch some movies, and it's a widescreen experience. I can also, I believe, fast forward. You can see by many times here, and I can also, let's say, play and pause the track here, change the volume, and... Uh, other controls here. You can also skip ahead by different intervals so you see these different frames for the movie. Finally on network is where you could access the internet and there's also internet radio built on in which I believe still work uh, after looking at a forum just a few days ago and also an RSS reader for basic news updates still work. The browser actually can, can still be opened but it's very out of date. It's severely out of date in fact so that a lot of certificates are no longer active and many sites just look super boxy and weird not to mention it's really slow now for loading up the majority of sites aside from maybe Wikipedia and Google. So anything complex is not going to be very good on this browser anymore. But if I wanted to do a search, uh, you can see that this is what the keyboard looks like. It's QWERTY, but because it's not a touch screen, you needed to go one by one to cycle through different words to type out, which was kind of painful using this console without wireless at all is probably going to be your best bet, except, especially since the PlayStation Network is pretty much no longer accessible on this device. That includes the PlayStation Store is no longer going to allow you to purchase anything new. You can still download pre-existing titles that you've purchased before, but as a new user, you aren't able to find anything new. However, the nice thing about having a console that has reached maturity is, of course, there's a huge selection of content which you can find readily uh, secondhand online auction sites in various secondhand stores, and you can find quite a diverse collection for really not that much money, in fact. I remember going to a Dollar Tree or a Dollar Store a number of years back and seeing them stocked with a number of titles, uh, games, and videos for the PSP. So some of these were sold for really cheap. Furthermore, one reason to find or pick up the PSP today, even in 2019, is to use it as an emulation console, which it still is an outstanding emulation tool today. Their game cartridges were very similar to just a kind of a DVD, but they were a little bit smaller uh, and lighter to take with you, and this is what one of the UMDs looks like. Um, so again, it's basically stuck between two plastic compartments, and we have a tiny little disc inside. I believe it's very similar in dimensions, and in fact, here is a mini disc, as aforementioned, onto the side here, also from Sony, for listening to music. But again, the UMD, of course, contains much more data, uh, even for video files and game files. We're able to just load it down like this, press down on it, and just close it up, and you'll begin hearing it start to spin. Uh, it has this very nice classic Sony design with this ring on the back, just 
hinting that there's a disc inside. And there's also slight bumps on the back as well, which just makes it more ergonomic just to really grip. And immediately it's almost loaded up, as you can see here. We haven't opened up the title yet, but the wallpaper has now changed to the contents of whatever disc I've popped in. In this case, it was this movie, this anime, Steam Boy. So it's playing back a few quick images or trailers in the background immediately. There's not really a huge difference between something like this versus, uh, again, one of their official digital copies that you could load by a memory stick duo, but this one does have slightly higher resolution. It also goes full screen, and if you picked up one of their UMD videos, there's also more settings that you can find directly, such as changing things like subtitles, various languages and audio playback, extra footage. Here's another disc. This is Need for Speed, so it's going to be kind of a game and we can see what the experience is like loading back one of these titles. But this really was the best that uh, we could see and offer from a portable gaming console from, again, over 10 years, over 15 years ago. So some of the frame rates here are a little bit jumpy, but uh, you can see a lot of the rendering and the textures of buildings in the background. Definitely going to be more realistic, uh, a, a very different vibe and theme compared to the competing Nintendo DS and DS Lite. It just felt like more of a grown-up console that maybe uh, people in their 20s and 30s would still be happy picking up compared to the DS with its more cutesy uh, kind of theme that uh, sold, I guess, even better for uh, younger teenagers and, and kids. So now, over 15 years later, you can pick up a Sony PSP if you've never owned one on Amazon or eBay secondhand for around $40. Very cheap, it's the price of, I guess, two or three meals, and I would say it could still be worthwhile if you haven't ever touched one of these and you're very curious, or if you're into game emulation. The UI is surprisingly snappy, and because it has a very mature collection of games by now, either by cartridge or by em emulation, I would say it could still be worthwhile. The only things that don't really work anymore would be the wireless. You can still use it as an internet radio player uh, for things like quick news updates, it's okay, but if you are using it as a web browser or for accessing the PlayStation Network, that's uh, where it's no longer functional in that department. I would say the battery life also still works alright. You can definitely get a day or two's usage out of it with moderate to heavy gaming before you need to recharge it again. So that's pretty much it as far as a revisited look at the Sony PSP, the PlayStation Portable. This is such an iconic and nostalgic product to look at. Uh, it brings back just so many memories from back in the day. So if you guys had held one of these, it really is kind of sad that a PSP has now become retro, but there it is. We are now looking at a device over 15 years old. Uh, so you can check out more details in the links down below as well as Sony's newer consoles as well. But uh, tell us your thoughts. Do you own one of these back in the day? What was your experience like? And did this bring back any memories? But anyways, thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the original Sony PSP 1000 series revisited.